is my homemade pocket hole machine. I've seen a lot of these machines on YouTube, but the inspiration for this one comes from another YouTube channel called The Wooden Tool Company. The user of that channel closed the channel down a few years ago and has recently surfaced again as the tool man. The main difference between my machine and the Wooden Tool Company machine is I don't have a lot of space in my workshop, so I wanted a machine that I could basically just assemble on my workbench, use on my workbench, and then pack away when I'm done. I don't want a full standing unit that would be taking up valuable space in my workshop. This is the quality of the pocket hole and you can see that the pocket hole machine provides a very cleanly drilled pocket hole. While it is a two stage process where you still have to clamp the piece in position and then drill, it is a very quick process and allows me to drill multiple pocket holes without a complicated and lengthy setup. Before I designed and built this machine, I used to use this Craig mini jig to drill all my pocket holes. The Craig Mini Kit is the cheapest way to get into drilling pocket holes and can be purchased off Amazon for just under $20. The Craig Mini Jig comes with the 15 degree drilling guide and a 3 8 inch drill bit with stop collar. In order to secure the workpiece in the drilling position, I designed and built a homemade push-pull style clamp. The pocket hole machine consists of an adjustable table which is locked in position by star knobs on either end of the table. The height of the table can be set to accommodate any size and thickness of material. However, I created positive stop lock positions for half inch material, three quarter inch and one and a half inch material. The positive lock is engaged by a simple bolt when the table aligns with the correct position on the main body of the device. The table has adjustable leg heights that can be set at a position which allows the table to rest on the work surface to which the machine is attached. This provides more stability to the table and the machine as a whole when you are applying downward drilling pressure when using the machine. The sliding drilling tray is moved by an arm connected to the lever system. When the lever in front of the machine is depressed, it pulls the arm down which in turn pulls the sliding tray down. This results in the actual drilling of the pocket hole. Two springs connected to the sliding tray cause the sliding tray to return to its starting position when the lever is released. Once the table has been secured at the correct height, you need to set the depth of cut when drilling the actual pocket hole. In order to do this, I created a stop block which is placed on the drilling frame to limit how far the sliding drill tray can travel when dr drilling. I created standard sizes of stop block for half inch, three quarter inch and one and a half inch material. When drilling either of these thicknesses of material, the relevant stop block will be inserted once the table height has been set. So, for example, for three and a quarter inch material, I would set the three quarter inch stop block in position to prevent the sliding tray from drilling through the table at the three quarter inch table height position. And likewise, I would use the half inch stop block for half inch material and the one and a half inch stop block for two by material. I came up with a simple dust collection system using a standard piece of PVC pipe. The inside diameter of the pipe is slightly smaller than 35 millimeters, so the pipe was enlarged by first heating it with a heat gun until it could be molded over the 35 millimeter dust collection hose fitting. The PVC pipe is connected to an enclosed compartment behind the drilling area so that chips are extracted as you are drilling your material. A small hole through the homemade drilling guide facilitates the chip extraction. The handle for the machine is also a piece of PVC pipe. When I originally built the machine, I underestimated how long the actual lever should be. It turned out to be way too short, so I attached a piece of PVC pipe 
by again heating the one end with a heat gun so that I could mold it over the shape of the existing handle. This extra length provides a lot more leverage and one unintended benefit of having a handle like this is that the handle can be detached when stowing the machine away. The custom built table has homemade T-slots. These slots can be used with 1 quarter 20 hex bolts or T-bolts to secure things such as push-pull clamps or stop blocks. In this case I have attached a homemade push-pull clamp but a Bessie push clamp can just as easily be mounted to a plate and secured to the table using the T-slots in the same way. In addition, custom stop blocks or flip stop blocks can be attached using the T-tracks to provide easy ways of setting up identical drilling runs. This is useful if you wish to drill a pocket hole in the same location on many pieces of material. As mentioned previously, I built the machine with the intention of having something that could be taken apart and stored out of the way beneath my workbench, so I needed it to be able to be broken down quickly and easily. The machine basically exists in two parts, the table and the body. The table can be very easily detached, leaving a rectangular body which fits neatly under my workbench and out of the way. You will notice that the way in which I secure the body to the workbench is with two ordinary clamps. I intentionally made the base of the body extend beyond the frame for this exact purpose of clamping the machine to the work surface. To use the machine you first need to set the table height. Here I'm adjusting the table to drill 3 quarter inch material. I'm using the positive stop lock for 3 quarter inch material by raising the table until the locking bolt slips through the 3 quarter inch positive lock hole. The table is then secured by tightening the star knobs on both sides of the body. Next, I simply connect my 35mm dust hose, clamp the material in place and drill the pocket hole. You also need to remember to use the correct sliding tray stop block to prevent drilling through your material and into the table. Even though it is a two-step process, it is far easier and quicker for me to drill multiple pocket holes in this manner as opposed to using the Craig Mini Jig. When using the Craig Mini Jig, you need to clamp Draw, unclamp, move, and reclamp. I have seen other devices on YouTube where users have mounted their Craig jig in an upright position and the material is moved behind while the user manually drills through the jig. Those machines are pretty clever and allow pocket holes to be drilled very quickly. However, most of these devices rely on a foot operated clamping method which makes a bulky machine eating up valuable floor space. If you want to see more on how I made this machine then be sure to subscribe to my channel and be sure to check out my website where you can get more information on this and other projects I'm working on. Thanks for watching.